Okay, I've got six feet deep. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate you being here and taking, taking your time. It really does help us a lot, especially if we have questions sometimes. So uh, appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, this meeting is called to order at 615 on May 17, 2022. Uh, Dave, are there any citizens with business not scheduled on the agenda that would like to speak at this time? Mr. Sir, I don't receive any. I know we've got several here in the audience, but I think they're here for item number two. And okay. Mr. TJ's here for item number four. All right. I receive anything ahead of the meeting or uh, okay. okay, thank you. And we did get notice we've got one person running late, so we're going to move number three on the agenda down to the bottom. Uh, okay, so with that said, uh, Moving on to the agenda for consideration and possible action on item number one. Consideration and possible action on April 5th, 2022, regular meeting minutes. Oh, and let me, excuse me, I'm sorry, Bill. And uh, let me just take a minute to welcome our newest member, and that would be Daniel Garza. And Gazda. Uh, Gazda. Yep. And, uh, uh, He's got a, uh, he comes to us from Texas A&M, uh, has a degree in construction degree and a minor in urban planning. Uh, I know he's been at it for at least five years now as a construction, uh, uh, what do we call it, the Man. project manager, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and he has a history, at, with, had a minor in urban planning and uh, some experience with historic marker programs. So. Daniel, if you could just say a couple of things, if you want to add anything. Um, not much to Thank add. I'm just, I'm excited to be here, excited to be involved and to help build the future and help plan the, uh, our beautiful city that's growing rapidly. Yes. And uh, you've got one young child and one on the way, is it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, hopefully you, you can help make it a good place to live. Plan to. So welcome. welcome. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Mm -hmm. So we've got five people now uh, on our membership. Uh, so do we have a motion about the minutes? If, does everybody have time to read the minutes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the April 5th, uh, 2022 regular meeting minutes. I second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? The motion passes. Item number two, consideration and possible action regarding a proposed paving and exterior lighting project at 14343 Liberty Street. Members of the commission, as you see in the packet, there was a sewer issue on private line over at the, uh, the H-Wines building, the first state bank uh, building that required the owners to remove a uh, section of sidewalk and uh, after taking it out they realized that they uh, solved some other issues by making the you know making the sidewalk a little bit wider and you know more kind of a plaza space or you know seating space in between there they are here just in response the owners the pets uh the island are here as well so if you guys would like to say anything or speak to anything certainly open the floor to you So I mean, the only, the only if if they weren't going back bigger, it would have been okay. Right. If it were just a direct uh, a replacement, then that wouldn't be in an exterior change. Okay. The only thing. Change is going from what the a three foot or a three and a half foot right. wide sidewalk to a twelve and a half foot wide you know, concrete space, and then the addition of two. Uh, lamps or lights mm -hmm. that are there those you know as i mentioned in the agenda pack you know that you know would need an electrical permit to do that uh, mm -hmm. but outside of that if, if it was just a direct replacement then it would not be considered an yeah. exterior change right okay um oh. go ahead no go ahead I, my only thing about any of this and every time we have a meeting about this uh, those people um, and businesses that purchase the properties 
They know they're in a historical district. It, you know it. It, it. That's what you bought. And for you to move forward with anything without formal approval from the city is just kind of a, a, a slap in the face to those who are trying to preserve the historical uh, uh, value of our downtown district or our uh, historical district. It's not the fact that it's bad or it's ugly or it's not, you know, adding w uh, value to anything. It's just the point that it's historical. And I mean, we've already had two instances where someone just did what they wanted to do and ask, you know, do, do and then ask for forgiveness later. There are no fines. You know, we just have to sit here and say, yeah, it's great. It's a great addition. Thank you for doing it. But you are in a historical district, and we want to preserve what it is that our town has. I'm not saying that the new sidewalk with lighting and all that is not a great addition or something that's going to make it worth more money or pull more people in. It's the fact that people who purchase and run a business, it, they know it's historical. That's my only issue is that Asking for forgiveness after you've done it is getting old, very old. That's what I have to say about that. We actually own the property before it's a historical zone, but we have invested a lot of money into that historical building. We're very aware that it's in a historical area, and we're proud of that fact. And so we certainly have not come here to slap anybody in the face because we don't want to go by your zoning. That's not the point, nor has it been the problem. The problem is, we owned that building, we had a sidewalk there before you had a historical area. It was granite and crushed, put some concrete on it, had a sewer problem, and then now we're trying to just get the sidewalk back so people who lease from us can get their customers to their business. I mean, it has nothing to do with trying to go around you or not. We did not realize that a sidewalk needed to be approved. Understood. Yes. It's just that that's what we hear every single time. It's, I'm not, I mean, thank you for taking care of it and making it nice. That's not what the issue is to me. The issue is it's historical and there's a lot of questions that are already asked about our downtown city. And sometimes people just, you're doing a great thing, you know, you're improving it, but it, you, you didn't think to ask before you did it. I get that you didn't understand that that was something that needed to be done. I do, because I live in downtown Montgomery. But that's, as a commission sitting here, I've been here and I and this is not the first time. And so, you know, we're fixed to talk about colors of buildings. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, and as Miriam says, I, we, you know, we have, this is not the first time. We understand the frustration. When you're trying to get something done, you want to get it done. And, and I think your, your idea is great. It all works in well with what we're trying to, to do downtown. Uh, but I can tell you we've had problems in the past where things, for whatever reason, nobody, I'm not going to say at fault, but done wrong or had to be ripped out or, it's, or it's, you've got problems two, two years later. So. This is here to protect you too, as far as inspections, permits, that type of thing. I will mention, I went down there this morning, uh, who, who is your contractor? Or? Okay, just the reason I asked. I, for the concrete or for the sewer? For the, for the concrete, for the concrete. They've already done some other work in town. CGB construction. Okay. I do have some concerns. A couple things that jumped out at me. The rebar is flat on the dirt. It's it's not, not clean, are they? They had to stop. Huh? They had okay, to stop. but okay, but I think everybody understands. They had to stop what they were doing. Well, hear me out now. No, I I was told you were ready to pour concrete the way it is right now. They got five guys. They, they had to wheel bear, They had to cart it in to make a dump. Yeah. So they raised steel up. One end, and as they work forward, they add the spacers under. What I see is, is, is rebar flat on the, it's on the dirt right there. Is no, it has to be elevated to have the, to get the strength. You don't understand what I said. Okay, go ahead. It's on the ground. They have to drive a truck in, a small truck to dump a yard of concrete. Yes. And as it backs up, the con the rebar is lifted. They dump the next load. They can't raise it and drive over it. 
Yes, I understand that. And that's another technique when you use the hook and you pull it up after the pour. I understand that. But when I'm seeing don't use the hook to pull it up. Well, you got to pull it up. You're still not understanding. OK, let me just put it this, let me put it this way. We need to have an inspector go down there before we pour, whether it's Chris, the engineer, or Public Works. And we want not only electrical inspection, we want a concrete inspection. Because I, I looked at it. I've got some background. We're less than four inches in some places. The ground has not been tamped down. You had you had problems in with the sewer, right? So now don't give me. A, I'm trying to work with you. I don't want you to have to go back and tear something out because it wasn't done right. That's why we're here. This so company has poured concrete many yards. That's of fine, but it doesn't look to me like the ground has been prepped correctly. Okay, I might maybe I'm wrong, but I'm concerned because. The rebar is on the dirt, so that means there's no gap there. And if you're going to pull it up for a gap, which that's the only way you're going to get your strength in that concrete. I understand that. Okay, how about this? Any sidewalk I've ever seen, you've got expansion joints every six to seven feet. You've got a 30 foot. You've gone to a 30 foot run here, 12 and a half feet wide. I don't see any expansion joints. They're cut in after the famous. Okay, how do you cut them in with the rebar there? The rebar is already there. How do you, you cut, don't cut an expansion door down two inches? This company's poured concrete here for Chris Cheatham for many. Okay, many fine. Uh, that's fine. You, you think they're not going to do the correct job? Then don't approve this. No, I just want I want somebody to go down there and inspect it, just like any any other job. You got to inspect it before you do it. Just hey, like, Jeff, I, I think we're here to approve or not approve, okay. not to argue with I'm not, I'm, the city. I'm sorry, the, but the, city and, the city will take care of the inspections. Fine, that's all I'm okay. asking for. That's what I just asked for. Are you all going to take care of the inspections? On the electrical step, we're moving. We don't have an inspection. I will just say we don't have an inspection for flat work. The city doesn't require an okay. inspection Okay. So well, as long as we have insp uh, proper expansion joints, my, my concern is, is that's our jewel, is that, that state bank is one of our historic jewels, and I hate to see a problem there. Jeff. Wait, um, I don't care who owns it, I'm saying it's, it's a, we're all talking about, I, not, I think you're overstepping your bounds. Okay, right. I don't care who owns it, it doesn't matter who owns it, the point is, we want to see something done right. Well, I do too. And and I believe that's my point. their contractor is, is poured as work and knows how to pour the concrete. Okay. All right. Fine. If the concrete fails, who's, who's responsible for tearing it up and doing it right? Me. That's right. And I hate to see a problem. That, that was what I, that, I'm not here to argue. I just, I, I told you. Oh, okay. I just don't want to see a problem because it's not good for everybody, okay? I'm not trying to make trouble here. All we're looking for is an inspection. That's it. Once the uh, sewer was repaired and the roots were removed and the tree was removed, all that was uh, correctly done and now you have the flow that's correct whenever the rain comes down through Montgomery or whatever. Is that a correct thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, I just, I'm a little concerned about the groundwork because we know we've had problems around here before with the soil, with various issues with shifting. So if there was a sewer leak there, possibly it wasn't, you know, I just hope it was tampered down. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to protect any, any problems. I'm just asking for an inspection and that's it. Thank you. Well, I suggest okay. can maybe. Can I say something? Can I say something? We, we have been without a front door access for over a month. Our business is suffering. That particular area is dangerous. And I think the city has had ample time to make inspections if they needed to. So I would like for you guys to please move on with this so that our customers can get in and out of our building without hurting themselves. Have, have y'all have y'all applied for the electric permit? It's not our, it's not, we, we, we have access to Liberty. No, no. It's Gerald, have you, to Gerald, have you all applied for the, okay, when, when are you planning on doing that? Where, I didn't put the electrical in. Steve, when I decided to put it, wanted it I was wearing the sidewalk like it was. Right. He said, can we extend it? I said, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. He said, I will get an electrician to do the okay. wiring. That's fine. 
Has have have they have they pulled the the electrical I permit? Was there. I wasn't okay. involved in the electrical. Uh, We've not seen it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that the simplest way to do, if we can, to expedite this is get your electrician to come in here and pull the permit. Okay. And get that taken care of because you can't pour pull you, you can't pull over the concrete to get the electrical permit. Okay. Okay. Get him to get the, the permit. And then, Ger Gerald, if I to satisfy Jeff, uh, while they're out pouring concrete, have someone take pictures so you have record of it that they're pulling the rebar up to the proper height in the in the concrete, Appreciate and submit that to the city so Jeff can see it and everything will go down the road. It needs to come and just be there. It needs to see it. I doubt he trusts. Well, I understand. I, I'm sorry. But I don't I'm sorry know. about giving you that attitude. I think you should all come and watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we, we appreciate what you're so, doing. You know, we, de we definitely have to get the, the electrical permit. Okay, I'll do that on uh, tomorrow. Yeah, get that taken care of, get that inspected, and then uh, you know, we go on down the road. Because I know you're trying to get, you, not only you all with the pet store, but H Wines, it uses that a lot too for people to get back to the back patio. So we need to get this. Your end done as quick as possible so Dave and them can approve it so you can get everything for it. Dave, the issue for shutting them down was they um, made the sidewalk water wider. Is that is that the issue? Right. Mm -hmm. Because they're in historical district and they didn't ask before they did. Is that the only reason they're shut down? It's become a pattern. Yeah. What is this? So in the historical district, are they doing anything incorrect to go against the historical ordinances by making that sidewalk wider and putting a light post on there? The reason we're here is because they didn't ask permission. Okay. So now we're waiting for your electrical. Come to the city. The city gives you permission, and we move forward. Is that a correct statement? And it's not doing anything to the historical value of the downtown district other than now they have a patio instead of an area where people have to walk on grass, trip over the sidewalk, yeah, all that. Now it's one smooth area and it's the boundaries of your land up against the building next to it. However many feet you're supposed to be away from that building that's next to you, everything's. I'm probably about one foot from this building. All right. Yes. I'm the, I'm the building next to it and I support the, we, we, we talked it and, uh, we support each other as far as the, the concrete. Uh, his tree was actually, the tree that was actually there that they tore up was a concern for me with the foundation. Uh, the roots were hard, blowing up on my building. And uh, so it was perfect time to, to eliminate the tree. But I, I live for a report next to these guys. I own the building next to them. And uh, so when I saw what they were doing, I thought the tree thing was a good thing because it was right up on my building and causing, uh, yeah, no issue there. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the, the I, I only have 12 inches yeah. of, uh, <laughs> of the uh, easement part, I guess. And, and so I was planning on doing a river walk anyway for the water runoff. That water actually flows down and goes to the right. Uh, yeah. So this sidewalk patio area is going to also improve the drainage for your building yes. as well. 100%, and, uh, and it also, like, it, it actually forces, not forcing me, but it tells me that I need to put river rock anyway because uh, the water runs off on my side and then it runs down. Uh, but the tree thing was my issue for me. Like, I, I just, that tree was right from my building, uh, and literally I stand on this property to turn on my water faucet. That's how close we are in you know. So, but anyway, I just give my two cents on Thank that. Thank you very much. But that actually, helps. So. And again, it all boils down to its historical district. Permissions weren't asked for, right. and it caused the delay. And whether it was before or after, at this present point, now we forgive and we either say yes or no to it. So I make a motion to approve the current sidewalk patio area that they want to pour cement as long as they get the electrical permits and someone goes over there and makes sure that whatever it is that they're doing is according to the historical ordinances and the approval of the engineer. That's, That's a good. lot to say, but. <laughs> Can I ask a question? We met the city administration the day that the enforcement officer shut it down. And I gotta know, why didn't the city tell us this Two, three weeks ago. Five weeks. All right. 
then why are we going to come to you guys to hear this? We didn't. What's wrong? We, well, what, what, well, you, you no, no matter what city you live in, to do work within the city, you have to pull a permit. Okay? I do work all over the state. Okay. I just got done pulling a roof permit in Dayton, Texas, little Dayton, Texas. Right. Okay? If I would have got up on that roof without a permit and their code enforcement would have came around, guess what they would have done? They would have shut me down until I went and got a permit. And if they want to be dicks about it, excuse me, they could find me. Okay? Mm -hmm. So every city you work in, you more than likely have to pull a permit, whatever you need to do. So Montgomery isn't the only one that's picking on people. Okay? And that, well, and that's the only case that I'm aware of, and those involved are sitting down with city administration. Instead of being jerks and assholes, okay, we don't need they could have told us what the Okay. Process. My, no, no, maybe I get off. I'm sorry if I get off. We, up, about it till get we appreciate what you're saying. We know you're frustrated, and we're sorry it got to this. I think there's a little bit from both sides here, but let's just back up, re, you know, regroup. Uh, the, the only reason I the only reason I asked about your contractor was most contractors know to pull a permit, and that was the only reason I asked. I, I didn't mean to cause ill feelings. Okay. Just. It's just, it's just normal procedure. What? It's Well, we don't need a lot. We don't need a lot of drama here. I don't understand why there's a lot of drama, but there is. You know, I don't know the backstory, okay? Yeah. About when you started or what was done and what was not done. I'm here to help you tonight. Okay. All right. Am I trying to help you tonight? I don't care what happened four or five weeks ago. You know, and that's and that, that's the, the problem we have just a little backstory right here. We have been bum rushed so many times for people coming in, doing stuff, getting shut down, and then they run to us like it's our fault. Okay? And it's it's starting to get old. It's starting to get old. The proper way to do it is Gerald, get your permits tomorrow. Have they send somebody the electrical to approve it, get it approved, get the pour concrete poured, and let's go down the road. Thank you. Okay? Yeah. I second the motion. Over Thank here. you. Right. And, and I'll just add, I know you're concerned about safety, and the good thing is you've got the back parking lot, and a lot of your customers come in from the back. So hopefully, you know, you can just put a, keep it blocked there so nobody tries to walk over there. Uh, you, you do have that option. A lot of your customers come in the back door, so or the, I guess that's the front door. I don't know, but uh, you know you can't do the job without swinging a hammer, and there's going to be a time when it's going to be messed up. That's, that's the way it is. Thank you. No, once it's no, once it's approved here and you do the work and your electrical, that's the main thing. You're going to have to get electrical inspection. Uh, once that's done and the concrete, you're done. You're done. Is the electrical on that design in our packet? Yes. Yes. Okay. No, once once that electric permits pulled and everything's approved and concrete's poured. Is there a timeline, Dave, you can for put your patio turning it in? On there going down the road. Once they turn it in? What's the timeline once they turn it in? The electrical permit? Yes, sir. If y'all come in in the morning, I'll get the permit issued to you and you can immediately turn right around and request an inspection and we'll have an inspection out there day after tomorrow. Okay. And then you can start your pour and as soon as it's approved. As soon as it's approved. And this is all it takes. It doesn't take long. Very good. And again, thank you for being here. This really helps because it's hard to do this without some back and forth. And, and I apologize if, if I got a little emotional. Uh, but appreciate you being here to, to get through it. Okay, moving on to item. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Take, uh, there is a motion on the floor. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Now, for item three, they show, is that person showed up? 
he has not checked on the uh, skip out of three and just keep moving down the agenda. Right. You should see Mr. Von Dane take uh, four. Great, okay. Thank you. Item number four on the agenda. Consideration of possible action on a proposed restroom project for the Montgomery Memorial Cemetery, a city designated historic landmark located near the intersection of FM 149 and FM 1097. Members of the commission, you have the information in your packet. So this is a project that's put forward by the uh, Montgomery Memorial Cemetery Association. They you know, have wanted some restrooms up there for a long time for when they're having uh, funeral services as well as the other events that they have up there like the horses uh, mm -hmm. And this would only be open while there's somebody out there while they're using it, so it's not something that's open all the time. And Mr. TJ is here tonight as the chair of the uh, cemetery association if you guys have any thoughts or questions you know looking at the information uh, the drawings that he's given it certainly look like high quality you know. it does, it does. Yeah. Yeah. is it nice. um is it similar to the restroom that we have by the old community center or will it be flushing toilets with ac and and heat in it or is it kind of like the one uh right here by the old community center uh, this one uh chair and commission this one uh, uh right now we don't have any uh Heat and all that in it. We just want it to be uh, available for the people that come up. And, and uh, according, I see on the, the deal to say uh, designated city historical, but we don't have a marker from the city out there that designated historical. Uh, the, the mark out there was the state, it's from the state, so it's a state uh, historical uh, cemetery. And we plan on just having it open, like I said, on certain days with the visitors of the uh, of the past when they come out, all the kids are doing, doing things like that. So is the state going to help you at all, or are you asking for the city to help you, or is this something you're... We haven't asked the city yet. We, uh, once we get everything in place, I, I, I filed like the general permit, and now I got to, I'm, I'm going to do the, uh, if this approved it, do the electrical and the plumbing, and then we'll be ready to go. But then if we have to, uh, we plan on doing it from community and volunteers, and we plan on going, if we have to, maybe we might have to go to an MEDC or something, right. you know, mm -hmm. and because it's not just, it's going to benefit the entire community. So it's going to be open when there is a designated person maybe, from your... It'll be open, say, like Mother's Day weekend. Oh, I see Father's what you're saying. Yes, sir. Uh, especially if it's not going to be open every weekend. So the water and the sewer are city? You're going to be city. And, city, then city who, and then who pays that water and electric? I'm just being... We do. Okay, you're a so you're committed. Okay. Uh, Montgomery Memorial Cemetery. All right. Unless we come back and y'all can wait. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have a problem look with that. You, look at you. Look at you. I don't have, I don't have a problem with that. You know, it, it, we, we plan on taking care of taking care of all. We have, like, we have cemetery dues. Each family that's got some more there, we require them to pay dues yearly. You know, all of them don't. Yeah. We, we, we operate like that. That's how we keep the mold. That's how so, we keep it up. So you have a contractor that's going to be doing it for you? Uh, yes. And you've already pulled what permits you need we to begin it? We just got the general appointment. We had not done the plumbing and the electrical yet. Okay. We're waiting on that. And right now you say is just your a little group is helping you, not the state yet? Have you asked for a grant or anything from the state? No, we haven't asked for anything. I'm, I'm part of the Montgomery uh, County Historical Commission, so... We try to get all our ducks here lined up before we move all forward right. to, to bring other people in so that we don't look this junk running here. And so you're just asking if the planning and zoning is, is on board with putting something like that in that state historical cemetery. Yeah, it, that's what we want. We're kind right. of trying to get it to look like, uh, you know, live and save it. They do it as a camp be out there a couple of years ago. We're trying to keep it all looking the same. You know, it, it, it's, uh, if you look back, I, I, when I did research on the cemetery, uh, before Texas, you know, right out after the land grant, they had patent. So I went through Austin, and it, all that was patent. And the patent showed that it was there May 10th, 1831. Wow. Oh, okay. And uh, so I went through, you know, Austin did a lot of the research when I was getting the cemetery to be labeled as uh, one of the state historical cemeteries. 
So, so it's going to be designed uh, a certain way, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in line with 1831 or how it looked or whatever? It's a beautiful design. It's yes. Really, that's, that's going to be the best looking bathroom in this city of Montgomery. <laughs> well, we, we want to, then, then we're coming back after the bathroom, you know, we got, we got ideas. To, <laughs> that steeple on, you can put a cross on there. And then we have to go up on, we got, right now we got the cheapest property in Montgomery County. Yeah. yeah. So, but after that, we'll probably have to increase our yeah. rates as, as we go because we got a lot of stuff that we want to do. The, the Boy Scouts here in Montgomery, they help us out a lot. They paint the fence, they do stuff. We got a group coming in uh, uh, from Indian Reservation. They're coming down out of state through, I think, through Larry, Jake, and a different group. They want to, they, they're coming down to visit. So we want to uh, be a shining example. Even though we're not in the historical district, I don't know why, uh, but I do know why. But anyway, we got in the historical district. It's a lot of history there because that used to be a, a, a gist meal. That used to be a meal in that area. Before it was a cemetery, it was a graveyard, and it's a difference between a graveyard and a cemetery because that's where Mount Pleasant Church originated from in that particular cemetery. That's where it grew when they was under brush off. There's a lot of history to that, but a lot of people don't know the history uh, up the hill. So down the hill, we know the history. Y'all we need to get that time. up the hill then. We need to get that history up the hill so we find out we, we know we about have, it. We have to be willing to be included. We have to be reached out to and asked to be a part of it, not stop at Clepper Street. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, let me just ask you, TJ, is the main reason for it being up fairly close to the street because of the hooking up to the suit, to the water? Well, that, that's one of the reasons we got, we've been leaving a spot there for it. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have to uh, put it sort of in the middle. You know, yeah. we got two spots that we can put it, but we're trying to cut down on the pipe run. Right, run. right. And, and obviously, it, that back to that southwest corner, to the, yeah. you got a lot of room over there. The sewer, the sewer is there by the gate. So yeah. if we come in there to the left, we can put it there. And if we don't bore under the road, we, we're going to run down the fence line and tie in front of that church, make it a lot yeah. uh, cheaper. Mm -hmm. Just run right. three or 400 feet of pipe and tie in there. Are you going to be asking us for uh, approval of our design or anything? Or like, asking for what? Like a, we're just well, going to. That's, no, that's no. what we're going to do is this thing right here. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I I'm just wondering if he's coming back. Designed it, we, we designed it with two stalls for the ladies, and, you know, face bed. The men have one stall and, mm -hmm. and, and a couple so of you. And we have a place now like the storage and things. We got a. Got someone that's going to keep it clean every, you know, yeah. so many times that we open it. We don't want to leave it open all the time because we know people are going to travel and they'll see it, they're going to want to go in. But once we approve this tonight, he doesn't, there's no need to come back to us again. Right. Yeah. We're looking at the whole design. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I, know, I know there's electrical and plumbing the city looks at. Yeah. Who looks at the ADA requirements? Who uh -huh. approves that? Since there's no concrete right. inspection, how is that handled? So the, way the, city, in, the way the city interfaces with state ADA requirements. Uh -huh. So in Texas, the American Disability Act, the way that that is done in Texas is through the Texas Accessibility Standards. Okay. Law, which is, so the project is, a, the short answer is no one. Because it, what the state's threshold is, is it has to be $50,000 or greater in value before the city requires just the registration number. So if, so if you're, say you're over $50,000, the project has to be registered with the state, and that's what the city's obligation is to check. So the city doesn't have an accessibility expert or, you know, an right. inspector. You register the project uh, with the state, so the city ensures that it's that it's got this registration number, and what the state does is within you know what the you know within three or six months of you being done with your work, in theory they send the, you know an inspector out to verify that it matches you know what your plan is. And does this T day is this meet is this over fifty? No, this no. is not. No. So, so you know if it's got ADA you know um, uh, deals that are ordered you know ADA. Mm -hmm. Uh, considerations in the design and in the plans, but on something like a restroom that's going to be again under the fifty thousand dollar threshold, they are a voluntary thing. It's not, and it's a private organization that's doing it. So, 
So it's not, you know, now the cities, if the city does any, you know, any type of project, then a city government and a county government, you've got to adhere to those ADA requirements. But for, say, a commercial building, if Damon was going to remodel something and only went to $10,000, he wouldn't have to be, you know, he wouldn't have to bring that building up to ADA standards. If he exceeds that $50,000 threshold, which is what the state says that the number is, then he would have to register you know, okay. that project. With, you know, with is that the total project? What happens if they start a new project and add on to it or upgrade it or anything like that? That it's the total project of what's being done or what's being proposed. Okay. So if he if, to look okay. at you, if you did six you know, ten thousand dollar projects, they start you know they might you know, catch wind of that. But again, it's it's you know just a cut and dry. It's the okay. work that you're you know proposing more than fifty thousand dollars, and that's where you would have to you know, comply with the Texas Accessibility Standards. If we approve this tonight, uh, when would you be able to start? Uh, once I get my plumber back, I had everybody lined up before <laughs> COVID, so now we get our plumber back, and I, sometime probably about the end of June, because I, I I got volunteers for uh, a lot of us doing the groundwork, the cement work. The guy going going to donate the dirt for the foundation. Uh, once I get everything approved, then I can go back and revisit and say, hey, we are ready to go. But, you know, we, we lined up people, a lot of people say it's, they, they, they think it's a good idea. And a lot of local people here in town are on board with it. That's great. I make a motion that we approve the consideration of possible action for a proposed restroom project for the Montgomery Memorial Cemetery. I second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. I have one question though, Dave. On number four, if you read it, it says a city designated historic landmark. Is that a correct statement or is it gonna is it supposed it to say is, a Texas? Well it is it's yes to both. So okay. It, it does have a, it is a state uh, a designated uh, historic uh, cemetery. It's got a historical marker that was issued by the state. It is zoned as a city designation historic landmark, which is why you guys are looking at it here tonight. Yeah, because my kiddos, yeah, I've had five right. go through high school well, maybe in junior high. I was like, Lord, maybe maybe we've flag. seen it grow. <laughs> yeah, maybe they give a I, just, I just want to make sure that's a correct wording. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be nice. All right, we can now move on to back to agenda number three. Yeah, Nate's here. Yes. Nate's here. Come on. Okay. Uh, yes, consideration of possible action on a shed repainting request for 709 College Street, Montgomery, Texas. Members of the commission, you have the information in front of you. We've got the applicant here, Mr. Brian Lundin, receiving the, uh, the photo that he submitted um, along with the, you know, the narrative. You know, just to, to, I guess, to recap it, he's asking for the small kind of wellhouse uh, shed that's off to the side of the garage. So this is on the Eugenia Street side. He's asking to paint that a dark, almost black, you know, color with some white accents. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ryan and let you ask any questions of him that you have. Yeah, my name is Ryan Lundin, 709 College on the historic Chilton House. And we have, this used to be an old well house. We turned it into, it was a shed for a little while. Now it's an office space. And we've done some exterior improvements, uh, putting a party plank and stuff like that to uh, make it more fit for office space. And we want to repaint it. Some of the paint is shedding off on the side and we want to protect it from rot and stuff like that. And so instead of doing the white though, which is pretty common around the city, we wanted to do something a little bit contrasty with the house and the, our neighbor's houses. And so we wanted to do a black with the white trim accents on it. And we think it fits the historic character uh, or it's historic colors and we think it fits the area. And there's other, there's another building that has precedent with being a black building and white trim. Uh, Which building is that? Yeah. The salon. Uh, yeah. Southern Roots. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the one that we had showed good, it. Yeah. yeah. We had a good discussion about that. And okay. Yeah. Well, that appreciate you putting the history in there on that. Cause mm -hmm. that's, that's and thanks for good. asking before you did it. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that salon did not. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it was in historic. Well, I, I want to make, I'm, I'm a huge history buff. Obviously, I live in the historic house. So I want to preserve the historic feel of the city. So I know it's, it's important to me, and I know it's important to you all. So. How long have you lived in that home? I don't know, maybe coming on three years now? Yeah. Yeah, so the house. I watched y'all move in, yeah. So, yeah, we love it. We love the area. And we want to preserve the history as well. So. When it's, you an, did. it's an interesting history. Yes, it is. Which we talked about, even the Masonic Lodge, I think, involved with the, the colors. But, uh, you know, you're right. It's funny, back in those days, they were so, they didn't have much. And they just, if they could even afford paint, it was either yeah. white or black because of the carbon and all that. Yeah. And I, I grew up in a house that was built in the late 1700s and still have family that lives in places like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. So did you have to get approval for the uh, uh, upgrades or the improvement to that shed before? Or is that something you just stayed in the air of the historical uh, that was matching the house? Or how did you do that? So for the facade change, that's on that's the, the side of the structure that's facing away from the street. Mm -hmm. So technically, that doesn't need approval. OK. Um, and it's a detached structure, so I don't really know how the Historic Commission views that. Um, Obviously, the main structure that's being viewed from the right of way has to get approval from the historic commission. But uh, should, we've kind of viewed it as a shed detached from the historic structure. It's not as old as the original structure right. either. So, um, no, we haven't gotten approval. Is it hardy there. plank you said? That so the what you're going three, to be painting? three sides of the structure are um, wood. Mm -hmm. And we replaced a hardy plank on the side that you can't see. It's facing our yard. But we want to paint the entire structure, so it's going to be one side hardy plank, three sides wood. So we did approve your neighbor down the way from Kitty Corner now, uh, that dark blue with the white trim, mm -hmm. and yuck. Everybody seems to be happy with that. Yeah, I like that. It's a sort of color as well. The two colors are. Yeah, I really like that. It, it provides. It, for a while, I was getting worried everyone was painting their house white with black trim. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad it's a nice change out of different colors in the city yeah. for sure. And we haven't had any complaints about the, the Southern Roots building, have we? No. No. Okay. Are you having any plans to do your house or just the shed? No, we've talked about it. Um, it's a pretty big project. Uh, we've, we've talked to Dave about maybe doing some different trim accents just to, for instead of going away from the black and white. Um, but we've kind of foregone that and we'll revisit another time. So not anything in the near future. So. And that Troy and Williams paint does hold up. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'll probably take a couple of coats to go against the white. So. <laughs> Beyond your pretty thick. Get you some kilts and primer. <laughs> yeah, because it'll bleed through. Because yeah. I think that salon had to do it uh, a couple times too. Yeah, it's the only they, thing. Well, yeah, they had an issue with the steps. With yeah. The stain, but yeah. I'm not a fan of black. <laughs> I like white houses down in the historic district or colorful like blue, but I understand. I, I know that it's historic and do the research, so I'm just, it's. Is the. Uh, I like white they, houses. Does the city, the historical <laughs> district have? I mean, this is just, I'm just thinking if okay. it does, it maybe they should, so we don't go. Does it have black on their color chart? The only thing that we prohibit is. Neon or fluorescent color. Okay, well, that says sparkles that. and stuff. Okay. Right. Rainbows and unicorns. There's no none of that. I'm going to make a motion that we pass and uh, say that great uh, paint your shed black. <laughs> <laughs> With white trim. With white trim. Yeah, white trim. <laughs> With white trim. All right, so we have a motion. And do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Okay.
Item number five, consideration and possible action regarding a preliminary report for a rezoning request from R1 single family residential to D commercial for 504 Caroline Street, Montgomery, Texas. Members of the commission, you've got the information in your packet and the applicant uh, is here tonight to, to speak to any you know, thoughts or questions that you have. Again, this is 504 Caroline adjacent to the Wings restaurant. It's being used you know, now for the parking lot area, you know, for the restaurant. Uh, the county is appraising him as a commercial property now. Uh, just to clarify the, their uh, uh, Texas zoning law and, and uh, the uh, appraisal you know, district, you know, classification of use are not in any way linked. They're still the zoning. You know, the underlying uh, zoning is residential, so it's asking to go to a uh, commercial use. I, uh, I've heard a couple comments about well, what happens if it goes to commercial. You know, they could do anything there. I just would remind you that anything that changed on the site would still come back to the commission. So it's not a, a rezoning, to my mind, is not a, a blank check or an open end or anything so, else. So that property, ever since whenever, has always been designated residential. How can the county yeah. just up and say it's yeah. commercial now. Best use is what they told me. I fought it last year because I did not want to pay commercial taxes. Yeah. <laughs> they have code, tax code, they're following state code. They said best use. I guess this guy takes the route to the baseball fields and so he deemed it best use uh, because of the houses. He used a reference of the antique house. The house has a bunch of antiques in it and it's a business. He basically the outline that Dave did with the yellow. He said there's no homes on that strip, so it makes no sense for. He asked the they asked and it was recorded. They said, uh, "Are you going to live there?" And I said, "I might," because uh, I did not you know know what I was going to do with it. I still don't know what I'm doing with it yet. It's it, it, it's a huge project. It's not just right. You know, slapping. I painted the outside to give it a little bit of life, uh, and then uh, the driveway, and then um, you know. That's do you the, think? Just going back, mm -hmm. I mean, just looking back, if the parking lot wasn't there, would he would he have done best use commercial or just left it residential? If I didn't fix it up already, like clean it up, I think they still would have, just because the, what he explained to me, I showed him the residential contract that I signed right. the previous, but you know, and I, I mean, I fought it uh, pretty religiously. And so when I called to see what your restriction, how did they, because I told him that this zone in the historical district, it's, it's deemed residential. Uh, and uh, he came back and said that uh, they can determine that on whatever, because uh, that's just, he didn't really give me a good explanation. I got voted out. I think there's three people sitting on the little board or whatever, and you go and you, you challenge your taxes. Because now, when I bought that property, it was at 90,000, raised at 90, then it went to 240. Now it's at 500 and uh, something. 20. So that whole lot was residential when you bought it. Yes, sir. Yeah, my friends used to live and in there years with their kids. Up and, I mean, this has got to be something yeah, done. Yeah, it was residential. Well, that's why that's where I'm at right now. So I feel like if I'm going to be, it's a double standard. They said that the city will catch up, then they'll see. Obviously, I, I'm I'm speculating. That does the driveway make a difference? It maybe okay, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say this or that. I'm not going to speak on the appraisal district because they already told me best use and that's what I stated in my my emails that it's best use and that's the code whatever they can use it for to deem it uh, and that's what they referenced the antique house because I you know the house is sitting just in the middle of nowhere right behind the donut store right there with a bunch of antiques and so right. um, trust me I didn't want to pay the property taxes on it you know now it's, now it's deemed commercial and I'm paying the county and um, uh, and, and it is reported from last year, and, and now I'm going to have to fight the $520,000 that they're appraising now because they have, I'm assuming they think I fixed it up inside because it, it looks nice on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have left the boat and the cars and everything still in the, in know, the old shed. <laughs> left that box in there, you'd have been know, great. I know, but I, I, I'm, I'm, sl I'm, sl the, 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 I'm slowly going through it, uh, through the house, because uh, the people who had it, they just left everything inside. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I really haven't put anybody in there to start just gutting. I have approval from previous, a couple of years ago. Uh, I didn't know if it had an expiration date, because I know some things expire and you have to redo certain things. 
but I have a lot of stuff that I, I had a big laundry list two years ago or so, uh, what I wanted to do with it, and I've slowly nicked at it, uh, but it needs new plumbing, electrical, and it's not, uh, it's really just a shell of the house, and I've had, I actually had some people come in and look at it from a safety standpoint, engineering standpoint, to mm -hmm. make sure, uh, you know, what needs to be done to it. Um, I've already had it quoted, that was before COVID, it was about 100 grand just to kind of get it up to par standards, uh, but it's probably up to 200 now, just with inflation and everything else. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, I really just, this whole process, I'm just trying to get in line with my paperwork uh, with the county because I am paying taxes and uh, I don't want to get into, if I have to, you know, sell it or whatever I need, you know, for whatever reason, it's, I'd like my paperwork to match up with the county that I'm, you know. And so, so you've been in, you've had that one, a little over two, you've been through two, two tax periods? Yes, sir. Yeah. And the first one was residential, and this one they came back? Last, last uh, April, uh, or whenever, last, when I fought it last year, they needed commercial. So is there a significant difference between commercial and residential? Huge. Yeah, okay. Huge. 90,000 I'm sorry, I mean, you are Mr. Haynes, yeah. right? Yeah, Mr. Okay. Haynes. I'm yes, sorry, sir. I just, I didn't. That's no, okay. Um, so, a couple of things I just want to mention for you to be thinking about. Um, was that, you know, there, there is special use permits that we use sometimes, and I, I, I don't even know if that's something that anybody wants to consider, but I, I think the couple of things I just want to throw out, I know the church is kitty corner, so I don't think you can ever do a, uh, an alcohol license. Right, 300 feet. Yeah. Yeah. I know when you, you and your wife came in the first meeting two mm -hmm. years ago, you know, you talked about the museum, possibly a museum, yep. Yep. or possibly a bed and breakfast. Yep. And, my only concern about this thing, at first glance, I think it looks like it makes sense to, you know, everything else is commercial there. But then you might think about um, all those other businesses, you know, they close it down at five. So it, it, the only opposition I can think that anybody would say is because you've got that big, beautiful historic home right behind you, mm -hmm. that those people might be a little worried about what's going to be in the backyard at, at night. But. It, and I'm only, I'm just saying that because we, people are gonna, you know, wonder what's going in. But where I'm going with that is that uh, if, you don't, if you think it would be a fairly quiet business, that's great. I don't see it being anything loud, but that's the only, that's the only thing I could think of that people would have a problem with. Uh, but like David mentioned earlier, our concern always is long term, if we rezone commercial and then you sell it a couple of years later, then, could, but Dave answered that question, not just anything can go in there. Right, and that's the other thing real okay. quick, I, you, you pointed on the alcohol, all that stuff is all state, like there's, you can't put anything liquor. I've had people coming and proposing thousands of ideas on what to do with that house. Yeah. Um, and um, at the end of the day, um, you look, there's the wing restaurant, but there's also the pet store, there's the winery. That, it's a whole business road right there. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, and I'm only citing what the appraisal, I'm not going any further than what they've said. Um, the people, there were, I know there were, that was one of my concerns. I actually brought that up to the city was that, um, you know, <laughs> uh, that people would not make me happy about the, it going commercial, but I've made it better than what I got it. And so, and I, I would continue to, 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 to do that. I think uh, just getting my paperwork in line is appropriate for me and my, for what I, what I do. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I, I think the city also, uh, I meant to bring this up, the city, or y'all guys approved that stuff anyway where we had a church that wanted to rent out something, y'all kind of, you know what I'm saying, y'all have to say on that to what businesses actually go in. Right. You can't just put mm -hmm. CBD oils or whatever, you know, some of other inappropriate. Y'all have a, the authority to to deem what's in the historical district, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. I mean from that aspect, because I, I was on some of the meetings where uh, a church wanted to open up into the shooters, where shooters is now. They wanted to do a church, but it's right next to an alcohol place, and it's not fair to the alcohol place who's been there, which is cozy great. Right. Um, and so you didn't allow them to do business there, and, and that. And so 300 feet is the the rule. That's just beer and wine license period. So you know it won't happen anyway, but just because a beer and wine license, when you fill that out, it's a, it's a pretty extensive uh, form. And they say, are you from 300 feet from a, a church? Um, and so there won't be an uh, alcohol place there, uh, even though I had many people at B52, uh, they came and talked to me about doing like a beer thing. And I was like, it's a great idea, but 
you see the church, you see two churches, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And so I, you know, it's gonna be more of a profession, if anything, it's gonna be more of a professional uh, building. Um, uh, that's what I see the future of it. Um, um, it's not gonna be, I don't think, that I'd like it to be another restaurant, but you know, um, the restaurant business is tough. Just like, <laughs> so. Um, well, it's not that big of a lot to build on either. No, it's not. Uh, but it is, uh, and it, you know, we do support the, the community too in that area as far as parking and stuff when we have festivals and stuff yeah. like that. So um, we are the only, I mean, we seem to be the only parking lot in town. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can go through the that, uh, the back area of it's the a house? Sport court, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a sport court back side. Yes. And then there's some trees there that are quite old. Yes. Um, are you contemplating doing anything with that corner for additional parking, possibly later with a carport or anything like that? No Is that carport. in your? Yes. So I, I don't know if you, we're, we're cleaning that area up slowly, but we're, I've got the, I'm going to box lay uh, the dirt and stuff. There was a, a, a barn that was falling. Yeah, and a Datsun down. that I wanted to buy. I, I tore that down just from a safety standpoint. <laughs> Uh, there is a slab already there in place, a concrete slab that's already in place, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is essentially revitalize that area, uh, clean it up like I did on the other side of the house. When, it, when you used to not be able to get to the stop sign, you yes. can see the traffic coming. And so um, I know that the Clover's house is doing, you know, like I said, I want to make it not just match the same area and be respectful to them and whoever else purchases that home. Uh, like I said, it's but you're not looking to just clear it flat and... No, 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 okay, no, okay. no. No, I know, at the end of the day, uh, my engineer, like I said, I, I had the engineers look at it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of cancer inside. Uh, I'm glad to give any one of y'all a tour, but it, uh, it needs a lot, about 200 grand worth of work. Um, and and the, so the sewer and the city water and everything goes into it, it works and... The water's on, are... yeah, water's on, I don't have the power on, I had the power off on that. Um, uh, just I mean, it did work because I had friends that lived yes. there. Yes, no, absolutely. Yes. So um, it's yeah. just been a while. It just you don't want to turn the light switch on because it is cotton uh, wire. It's, that's how, and it's dangerous. I mean, literally, with and that's one of the reasons I don't have power on. It's because if something, you know, we have uh, critters in the house. <laughs> so we missed so, there was a doll in the window for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> so commercial day. I love that doll in the window. <laughs> well, who took that thing out? Of there? Put, it it doll. Uh, put it back up there, please. I will. I will. Okay. So Dave, if he makes it commercial, he could subsequently lease it out to lawyers or dentists or doctors or hair salons. Hair, hair, salons. hair salons people come. Yeah, come in and do uh, studios. People from uh, uh, the guy that owns the building down over uh, Monty West. Mm -hmm. So he he, uh, there's, he has people in there. They want to do like bridal stuff. They think because this is a a winery bridal area tourist type place. They, I've had I mean I get requests. Some I said the building's just not there yet. I mean we're you know and I might just uh, just because of the clovers. I mean they they dropped a lot of money. I might do it. I just. I haven't had the itch yet. I'm watching the recession about to hit, and so I'm kind of watching my budget, and so I'm, I'm fiscally responsible. Uh, you know, the rest, like I said, the restaurant business is a, it's a tough business. I've had uh, 18 months of consecutive food increases, uh, and my I've had I've only done three price increases on my mini board. So I'm kind of I'm sitting here waiting for the other foot to drop. We haven't gotten a bell yet in the food industry, so uh, for us, we're just we're hanging in there. We're, we're you know getting people to work here. Uh, it's, it's getting kind of tough too. I mean, I have a help wanted sign uh, back out. Um, you know, uh, I learned a lot in the last two years in this community. I said, uh, you know, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, chicken wings are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Forty dollars a case two years ago. Now one hundred and seventy-five dollars that I'm wow. paying now. So. So Dave, um, refresh my memory. Once he goes commercial, he can't go back residential. No, he could. He could. He could, they could request it. Yeah, yeah, process. You know, okay. If you get a request, it, the, one, you know, the one difference would be is you, know, you can still live on a, a commercial zone property. And you know, if, you know, if, you were, if you could show, you know, this is my house here, uh, appraisal history. Like the floors, the floors, they live on top of the, right. on the yeah. business. And yeah. so you can live on, on, on the business. But I, I don't, like I said, if anything, it would be added onto the house um, to get more space. The house is misleading. It's not as big as you think it yeah, is. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a very, I mean, it's beautiful, uh, but it's very, it's small on the outside. The white actually makes it pop and make it look, it looks like a 5,000 square foot home when it's really, 
probably under a 2,000 square foot home. Um, and, uh, but, but yes, I mean, it's uh, one of those things that at the end of the day, I just want to get my paperwork lined up for, for you guys. And then, you know. Yeah, Dave, the, the question I had, and I don't know the legality of this, I know in your letter, uh, it mentioned trying to expedite this. Oh, uh, so uh, <laughs> I don't that, think we have. I asked the question. The uh, ability to do that, do right? I asked the, for me. It, it was uh, when I put in that that cover letter. I just think it's kind of redundant. The county's already deemed it. It's not like it would have been harder if it wasn't. And then I'm trying to go through the county to go through those steps. I just thought that uh, you know I know y'all got to go through your motions, and, and I've already paid for the for the service to have the city attorney put a publication out. Okay. Um, so I've done all the. I, I've crossed checked off everything uh i was requesting something that would you know it, this, it, to me this is i personally think it's a kind of like common sense like it doesn't yeah. you know but, but yeah. i requested it if you can say no and that's fine i just put it in there if we could exit that it or you know because it's at the end of the day the county's already deemed it so who's going to fight the county yeah. and and i I don't, well, I don't think we can make we can't make that decision. No. Can we, we still Dave? have to follow those steps. Yeah, we have to follow the staff. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you already been right. raised on it, it's just that you know. Texas right. Yeah, there's there's procedures, procedures we have to follow. I mean, if we if you wanted to get the legal involved, then we'd have to table it till the attorney gets here the next time, and then you'd be about the same time period anyhow. Right. Yes. Well, so, I, just, I just try to eliminate the, the redundancy. As, yeah. In a big well, I understand. Yeah. So that, yeah. That's all because. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, the county seemed to, you know, they have jurisdiction over, the, you know, like Harris County, there's no zoning laws, but Montgomery County, they, they already did it, and trust me, I, I, uh, I wasn't happy about it, and, and that's on record that I, I didn't, one, you know, agree with it, because uh, they just, I, you open up your letter and it shows commercial, and so uh, things change. Welcome to Montgomery. Because <laughs> it's growing fast, and you know, at the end of the day, they're just—they're—it's—it's it's insane. I—I I don't even know. I, I'm protesting the 500 and whatever it is down there. Right. Uh, it, I mean, it's just absurd. And there's no work that's been done inside. Not one. You know, nothing that I and I—I um, I, I need six roll-offs just to clean the whole house up inside, just because it's that bad. So. So, what we need need to make a motion for the two public hearings on. So what we'll do, the, the first thing we need to do is to form the preliminary report, which a draft is here. They can be very basic. You can add anything to this that you want. This covers us in terms of what we need to have. And then just to make sure that we get those steps in, I've got one item for the preliminary uh, report, which is this one, and then the next one, the very next item will be to call those public hearings on the rezoning action. And then on the 24th, next Tuesday, uh, city council will also be asked then to call the public hearing that they have to have to go through it. Yeah, with, I mean, you know, we, no matter what that residential, commercial, you know, we in the historical ordinances still have control on what can be done there on that property. Right, and that's really what that's why it's such a, but I still need to get right. my- Yeah, well, that, that being said, I'm gonna make a motion uh, to approve uh, moving the property R1 single family to residential B at the uh, 504 Caroline Street, Montgomery, Texas. We have a motion, and do we have a second? I second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? None. The motion passes. I have a question though. When, when, now that we've done this, uh, is this helping your uh, situation by going and saying, hey, this is not a $500,000 home? It will. Now that you can go I, back and say that, hey, officially it's commercial, so. No, well, that's the thing is I have to go in. I think they believe that I've done work inside the home. Okay. And so I'm going to have to show pictures that they're just speculating and they're going around driving around. The guy, I guess his name is Troy. I, he ended up driving and taking his kid and he saw that he's actually frequent at my restaurant. And so he's got to see the house. And so he's thinking there's something going on. We do use water from there, from the restaurant too, to do cleanings and stuff, rinse the deck and the porches and stuff off. And so uh, maybe, I, I, again, I have to prove that stuff to them and then they come back and they, they have three people doing the same thing you guys are doing in voting and saying, you know, well, what do you think it is? You know, and we've made no changes and other than just to paint it and then put the, the driveway on the backside and that's it. And um, 
but at that time that was at 240, and then it jumped to 500 uh, and whatever it is now. And uh, I assumed it's just going to get more because I mean this whole area is getting mm -hmm. crazy. And I think I saw the impact; it was a uh, uh, something 30 percent increase on, on property taxes mm -hmm. across the county. Mm -hmm. So it's not just it's not just me. Yeah, it's not just, no, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's across the board. So especially on the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we sure appreciate uh, all you've done so far for the community there, and you know, just. Do I have to keep coming back? And, and do I mean, is there any kind of questions that would need, like, so I come back on the second PNC, right? Uh, when is the next one scheduled? And then, so our next one will be the yeah. public hearing for the next uh, scheduled meeting, which is on the seventh. Unless you guys would want him back, I think you understand the request and you know, talk about the request and have it here. Yes. Unless you go in there, I feel like that I mean, I could be here. I just think it, that's what I was saying about the redundance. <laughs> it was like because uh, I mean, I don't know why you need the two, but it is policy. Pro, pro, a policy is policy. I'm not arguing with that. I just I, I, you don't know until you ask. So I'd like to ask, and if it's not possible, that's fine. But it's just like uh, at the end of the day, we're <laughs> it's, you know because we still have a, a, the, the city council to right. approve that too. So that's that's the other hurdle. This is this hurdle, but then there's a. The, they can override us and say yeah, yes. I think what two more hurdles is you got a public hearing. You've got the public hearing for PNC on the 7th, and at that point, after the public hearing, if you guys are able to form the final report and recommendation that will go to the city council. Mm -hmm. um, the city council, unlike um, here tonight, the city council can't talk about any of this on the 24th. All they can do is call that public hearing because they have to get your report from the 7th mm -hmm. before they can even. Yeah, you know, need to consider it or talk about it. So it's again, you know, to your point, yeah, it's a lot of steps, and for something like this, it it does sometimes feel, you know, a bit out of place and out of sorts. But well, I mean, and so here's cool. the thing: someone else is going to have the same problem down the road. I mean, this development's it's growing down this stretch, and you know, I've, I've been blessed to have this that small corner there that opened up for me, and and uh, you know, we're the to me, I'm the face. I feel like that's the first thing you see when you drive into the town, and um, you know, and, and I, I don't think that's going to change. I think that at the end of the day, if anything, it's going to be office buildings and leasing out those, like dentists, lawyers, real estate, or whatever it is. You know, it's going to be an office just because of the size of it. Uh, and then, if anything goes beyond that, it would be approval to go and expand the, the house or uh, uh, even uh, you know, more parking. Yeah. So you, I mean, you still have to get the letters out. Right. Yeah, so, right. That's, so once you guys call this public right. hearing, the next item, so again, this next item is to call the public hearing. Once you guys do that, and I send out the letters. So then we really couldn't have a special meeting before the 7th, realistically. Right, right. Okay. because the state says, you know, right. you've got 10 days where you have to have, really you have to have one day more than 10 days. Why well, they don't just say 11 days, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, so you've got to mail those letters out at okay. least 11 days before you guys have the public hearing and again with the idea, but to, you know, to Dane's question earlier, the next time on the 7th, that's really for folks to comment back, but not yeah. really, you know, you've kind of got the information, you know, to him at this point, there's really not a back and forth there. Would he, would he, would he benefit from being here though? I'm just saying this because I mean, of the, if the public came, here, and started yeah. asking questions. Right. If, I'm just if, saying. If someone came here and wanted to speak against it and, and felt like they could, you know, sway, you know, the vote of their, or, or, you know, the recommendation, okay. you know, from you guys, then it's a safe thing to do. But again, the purpose of the public hearing is, is you know, for other folks and neighbors and folks like that to speak to it. But I think the people who live in the community know, see that if what it is, it's nobody's going to live there. Nobody's going to live next to a Wings restaurant. Right. It's just not. It's just. I mean, unless you have free, free wings for yeah. life, right? But I just, I just from a, from a, from, I just don't see anybody coming in and really unless they bought my restaurant and then they're living there or something. They're going to live next door. That would be the only logical, you know. But the residents that, that frequent there that I've dealt with, for the most of them, they're supportive. So they, you know, they, it's, it's a. They know what I am. They and they I brought. They saw what I was about when I open up the restaurant and what, what I brought to the community and, and it's not just some honky-tonk type place it's a you know family establishment and so um, and again you guys dictate all that stuff anyway what comes into this town anyway so you know what I mean like as far as businesses right. and what can and can't be 
done. And so it's really just a, a more of a clerical thing for me um, to keep this thing in line. Uh, whether you don't do it, it doesn't affect me in any way, but it doesn't match up my paperwork um, I'm from the county. And I, that's really, right. and Dave did a pretty good job with the yellow showing all the businesses there. And that's really where I kind of, it kind of does make sense because that's what this, the appraisal did is they did the same thing that they, they showed the, the businesses around in this area and they, they targeted it, you know, in a sense. And yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, I, I, I can't understand because the address is Caroline. How can they, how can they, that's, mm -hmm. I, that's it baffles me, and again, the guy's name is Troy, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, and, and, and he was very, uh, he said, he, he goes, he, he, he was trying to be, come on, man, like, and I, because I am right next to the business right here, you know, at the restaurant, and so yeah. he, he's just putting things in perspective, like the, just true common sense to yeah. it, and he says, he felt, he followed state, state law code or whatever it is that he follows for his appraisal appraisal or whatever right. he does. Uh, and I, like I said, I presented the contract. I showed him what I paid for it. I showed him what I paid for the for, for the driveway. I showed him what I paid for the paint because they were quoting this so much higher. And now they put it at 500 and something thousand. That's that's, that's huge. Yeah. Um, cool. you know, for a house that jumped from $90,000 that was appraised to 520 in two years, yeah. it's just baffles. And I know what they're thinking. Well, something well, takes right. inside. Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking it's an operatable home or well there's there's a lot of homes and property there that have been artificially inflated here in the last two years it's yeah. ridiculous I well, good, good luck with that because i think you're on the right track about taking pictures and you're going to have to it's a pain you yeah, got to go down there right. but i think you have a very valid argument there because then you'll know you know so i don't think they're going to reverse it though i, I mean i i based off what the stuff that i when i've gone down there to fight my taxes appraisal this is just not going to budge they mm -hmm. i mean they're 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 not going to reverse it back to residential uh just based off of what they're seeing with the businesses unless somebody has a true argument that they moved in and has a business under or something and it would be it would still be like r1 b1 something like the floors right down the street on the other like down the road from me but two businesses down i believe uh, floors is what it's called, I guess. Uh, where you live on it, it's still residential. It has R one, but then it has B one, so whatever their code is on that thing. But uh, yeah. well, it's got a lot of potential. Yeah. Excuse me. I just want to say, you know, great potential there, uh, but that's going to take time. And so maybe right. that you know maybe you can get a break on that. Uh, uh, but I think what gave us confidence to say no problem with commercial is that if you do get opposition on public comment. I think it just has to be communicated that that's not necessarily forever. I mean, not just anything can go in there. And I think that's the key. That was the only red flag that goes up. Anytime you're looking at going from a residential to commercial, there's always that red flag. But I think what gives us the confidence is that it can't become just anything. That's, that's right. Because yeah. I had to get approval for the wing place. I mean, like what you put in there. I mean, I remember being on those little meetings here. And, and like I remember this church guy, he really wanted to go to that where Shooters is, and but because Cozy Great and church, you can't mix alcohol right there, and that's why I'm 300 feet plus from from where I'm at. My point is, self, when I sell beer and wine, I'm 300 something from that church. That's why my cash register is that point of sale. That's why my cash register is a very corner of my business to get make sure that I had that room and buffer because I am I was pretty close to as well because when you fill out your beer and wine license, they that's a, that's a that's a big document. That's worse than an FBI background check because they go through everything. Okay. So. Well, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to, I guess, call the action of uh, the two public hearings uh, on the, yep. from the preliminary report for the rezoning request for 504 Caroline Street, Montgomery, Texas. Five second. Yeah, second on item number six. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? None. The motion passes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I make a motion we adjourn. Oh, second. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all those that. in favor, say aye. I can't believe that. Aye. 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 I can't believe <laughs> 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 I can't believe this. We're done. We're done. You got a, you got a lot, of, lot going on. Good, good luck. I missed my number for silo, by the way. Oh! <gasps>